Google's struggle with hardware is nothing new. Not only their hardware business is confusing, but also they struggle to compete with devices using the platform they build. Google has been releasing its flagship Pixel device in October and a budget variant of its flagship in May of the following year. However, the recent rumors suggest that Google will completely abandon the flagship space and try to stay competitive in affordable mid-range phone space. Our topic for today's video is about Whitechapel, Google's alleged chip that is going to power its Pixel phone lineup and Chromebooks in the subsequent year. Hey everyone, I'm Chaser and welcome to Tech Square. According to a report by Axios, Google may be developing its own processor that would power the company's Pixel smartphones as early as next year. Feature versions of the processor could be used in Google's Chromebooks as well. The LS chip is apparently called Whitechapel, an 8-core ARM processor which will be manufactured using Samsung's 5nm process. A report from Axios also indicates that the chip will be optimized to run Google's machine learning technology and may have a dedicated allotment to improve Google Assistant's performance. Google is not new to making its own chips. For different functions of the devices like the security, some of Google Pixel phones have a security chip called Titan M. They have also made a custom chip in collaboration with Intel called the Pixel Visual Core, which has debuted in the Pixel 2. The purpose of the Pixel Visual Core was to help in image processing tasks on Pixel devices. Thus, Pixel phones were capable of delivering superior image processing capability. On Pixel 3 and Pixel 4, they have similar photography-focused chips called the Pixel Neural Core, which not only helps in image processing tasks, but also runs machine learning operations. However, the main SoC on the Pixel devices is made by Qualcomm. Anyways, with Google achieving great image processing capability, better machine learning operations, and stronger security, the question remains why Google hasn't dipped its toes into making their own processor for their phones like Apple did for iPhones. Clearly, with their own custom design chips, Google is able to create a far superior product. Before going into the debate of why Google hasn't made its own processor for their devices, let us talk about the benefit of using in-house processors. Traditionally, companies take their processors from one company and depend on the OS made by another company. That's why they have no control over the performance of the device. Let us take a look at Apple. Apple makes its own custom chips for its iPhone and iPads and uses its own OS on its devices. This allows Apple to design the chips and write the codes for the OS that complements each other, which in turn results in a product that is far superior to the competition. Apple is only able to achieve that level of synergy as it designs its own chips so that its OS can take full advantage of the hardware inside its devices. We have already mentioned how Google is able to do just that, on a smaller scale, with its imaging capability with the Pixel devices, we can only imagine what Google will actually be able to achieve if they design the SoCs for their own devices. Having a customized chip means Google can make it work the way it wants. With that level of comfort over the chips will allow the company to specifically tailor a certain piece of hardware to achieve even higher performance. As for why Google hasn't done it yet, the first and foremost reason is that Google is an internet company. Hardware is not Google's main focus. Thus, they were happy with depending on others even though their smartphone market share is only a meager number. However, Google still very much wants to stay in the hardware business. And to do that, Google realizes that it's need to have a better grip over their devices. This starts with designing their own chips for their own devices. But designing or making chipsets isn't a child's play. A company can't just hire a bunch of engineers, assemble a team of brilliant minds, and have a working product in only two years. Companies need to invest years in advance and have to work through a bunch of complex steps to produce a competitive chip in few years later. And even after pouring a lot of money into designing their own chipset, that chipset may not be capable enough to compete against the rival. Now, Google may not be new to developing its own chips, but designing the main system on chips is far complex than designing a chip for a specific purpose. There are lots of things that need to be maintained while making a system on chip. This is one of the biggest reasons why the biggest chip makers in the world have almost no new competitors. Although Google has been building its semiconductor capabilities gradually, besides the custom chips for machine learning and image processing tasks on Pixel devices, Google also designs the processors used in its server products and machine learning data centers. The company has also hired several chip experts from rivals, including Apple and Intel. Even though the company is a bit late to the party, but it seems Google has been planning this for quite some time. 
Besides, the company also has Samsung as its foundry and the company can offer further expertise to Google in designing their chips. The report from Axio also suggests that Google has already received its first working versions of the chip. However, we may not see a Pixel device running on Google Design chips until next year. Meanwhile, subsequent versions of the chip could power Chromebooks down the road. Since we are done with the why Google hasn't designed their own chip yet, another question arises, why now? Well, Google has been struggling with the sales of its devices. Google's Pixel smartphones are great phones, no doubt, yet sales of Pixel devices have been unimpressive. Moreover, the cost of making smartphones are getting higher. As a result, the price of the Pixel devices, among all the other devices, is also getting higher. Meanwhile, Google's lack of experience in hardware space, the company is having a hard time making the devices lucrative to the consumers. And increasing prices isn't helping the company in any way. There is also another element. Like all the manufacturers in Android space, Google also takes its processors from Qualcomm. This means the company has to depend on Qualcomm for several aspects of the OS, like the user experience, overall performance, energy efficiency, and software update, among many others. So the company is taking a similar strategy that Apple has been employing since the iPhone 4. Designing its own chip and optimizing the OS according to the chipset to leverage its full potential to the consumers can have all overall user experience that are unparalleled to any other competitors in the market. Well, maybe except for the iPhones. So in a nutshell, the reason behind Google's decision to design its own chips comes down to reduce the cost of production so that the hardware business becomes somewhat profitable for Google to continue making its devices. And to offer overall powerful devices, that can offer the Android experience exactly like Google intends to. So that is all for our today's video. If you like this video, then hit the like and share with your friends. Let us know what do you think about Google making their own processor. If you love our videos, then subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get notified for our future videos.